Snow Tracks is sponsored by Ski Doo, Yamaha revs your heart, and by FXR Racing, world class outerwear. Every year at around this time, the crew here at the Snow Tracks World Headquarters tends to get a little cranky and argumentative. Tempers flare and fingers are pointed, all in defense of one coveted title the Snow Tracks Real World Sled of the Year. I think one of the reasons Snow Tracks TV has become a favorite for so many of you is that you know the crew is very diverse in terms of their riding styles and preferences. The problem arises when we're all forced to sit down and agree on what the Real World Sled of the Year should be. But today, I'm going to attempt to articulate everyone's thoughts and feelings and, at the end of the day, give the award to the most deserving sled. Let's get started by unveiling our top four before we begin to narrow it down further. This season, after thousands and thousands of miles accumulated, the entire crew unanimously agreed that if they had to pick one sled to ride all season from each manufacturer, they would be the Polaris Switchback 800 Pro R, Skidoo's XRS, Arctic Cats El Tigre, and the Yamaha Viper Deluxe. After we'd all agreed on what the top four should be, none of us could agree on what the most important traits were for a sled of the year. Still, we did eventually hash it out, and here's how the cookies crumbled. First off, I want to make it clear, even though the Yamaha Viper Deluxe is out first, it does not in any way mean we didn't like it. This is an excellent snowmobile, in our collective opinions, one of the best Yamaha has ever made, but it had a few things we felt needed improvement. First is shock valving. This sled rides good, but it's not great. It suffers from too much compression damping and the shocks aren't adjustable. A sled called a deluxe, you expect to have a cushy ride, and this one was just too stiff. Second, we found the clutching on all of our Yamaha Vipers to be grabby on engagement and have difficulties back shifting fast enough. This made for a bit of a jerky ride at slow speeds and left the sled feeling bogged down at higher speeds. Luckily for Yamaha, these two problems are very easy to fix. There's nothing integrally wrong with this sled, there's just some calibration issues that need to be tweaked. Next on the list is Skidoo's XRS 800. This was a sled every one of our crew loved to ride and it was regularly at the center of a pre-ride scuffle. What do we love about it? Pretty much everything, starting with its 800 E-Tech motor. It's hard not to love a motor that's this clean and smooth and is this efficient, but it's impossible not to love a motor that does all that and has a seemingly endless supply of power all through its power band. We also love how this sled looks. Like it or not, style is extremely important. No one wants to ride a boring looking sled no matter how great it is under the hood and the XRS just looks fast. Ergonomics are good and the sled is comfortable to ride all day, but what really endures us to this sled is its ride quality. I'm just gonna toss this out there. The R-Motion is the best riding skid frame you can buy at this moment. Unfortunately, all is not roses with the XRS. We have said this many times in previous test rides of many different Skidoo, XS, and XP models, but we're gonna say it again one more time. The front end of the XRS is too aggressive and the steering feels too heavy. The sled darts like crazy on hard pack or frozen trails, and this makes it very tiring to ride on a long day. Pretty much everybody was willing to accept this issue to get a ride on the R-Motion skid, especially when the trail was bumpy. But at the end of the day, it really was this sled's Achilles heel. Fortunately, we already know Skidoo has addressed it on 2015 models. Our top two contenders are sleds that over-deliver in very different ways. Before we came to our final conclusions, we had to ask ourselves, what traits truly make for a great sled? When an average rider climbs off, what are the things they immediately want to talk about most? Two words, power and handling. Now, I would have thought ride quality would have been among the top two, and it probably would be for me. But the truth is, time and time again, power and handling are the two things people want to talk about most when they get off a really great sled. 
So how does this explain our two finalists? Simply put, the Arctic Cat El Tigre 600 with its new SeaTech 2 mil sets a new standard for 600 class performance. And the Polaris Switchback 800 Pro R continues to be one of the easiest to ride sleds we've ever come across. The El Tigre is not an all new sled. It's a standard Pro Cross chassis with the new for 2014 seat that solves any ergonomic problems we had with the previous model. Suspension is the same, and other than it's all black with green accent and styling job, it looks the same as 2013 models as well. The El Tigre rides decent, though we think it's still too stiff and aren't crazy about the lack of adjustability in its Fox Float IFS shocks. It handles really well and has been described as handling more precisely than the Polaris, but with lighter steering than a Skidoo. So, all of this sounds good, right? But so far, there's been nothing that sets this sled apart from all the others. But wait, there's more, my friends. There is a special little treat laying underneath this hood that will make even the most manly man as giddy as a schoolgirl at a Justin Bieber concert. Snow Tracks is sponsored by Quebec Original, where the snowmobile calls home. Arctic's new SeaTech 2 600 mil is to snowmobile engines what Jimmy Johnson is to NASCAR. It's unbeatable. Not only is it ridiculously fast, both in actual speed and seat of the pants feel, but it's also unbelievably easy on gas and oil. So far, it's been rock solid reliable to boot. It takes less than one squeeze of the flipper to know this motor is the shizzle. Combine this power plant with the El Tigre chassis and you've got a lightweight, easy handling, smooth riding, mean looking snow bullet just waiting for that lever to be flicked over to fully automatic. Now how can anyone compete with that? Well, to be honest, the answer is far less exciting but equally as appealing. Polaris's now five year old Pro Ride chassis, more specifically the Switchback version, has been massaged and refined over the past few years and has become what we feel is the easiest to ride snowmobile on the market. Why? I'm really glad you asked. So what makes a sled easy to ride? Well, first, it's gotta be comfortable. The Switchback is definitely ergonomic excellence in a bottle. When I sit my behind on this wide flat seat and I reach for the handlebars, I can't find one thing to complain about. And this is a sentiment shared by almost every person who has swung a leg over this beast in two full seasons. Next, a sled has to have excellent ride quality in a variety of terrain. And again, the Switchback delivers on this in spades. So far, the Switchback has soaked up everything from small stutters to large craters without flinching. But ergonomics and ride quality are only part of the story. The number one reason nearly every rider agrees the Switchback is so easy to ride is its ultra light and forgiving handling characteristics. Nearly zero darting, ultra light steering, and an almost uncanny level of steering stability result in a sled that can literally be driven at 90 miles an hour with only one hand and not feel the least bit scary. I'm not saying you should do this, I'm just saying it's possible. Sure, some say it understeers a bit and lifts its inside ski in the corners. It's a Polaris. This is one of their defining handling traits, and most will trade a little precision for easier handling any day of the week. One has a decent ride, great handling, great ergos, and a stellar motor. The other has a decent motor, great ergos, great ride, and stellar handling. If these two sleds seem pretty equal to you in terms of positives and negatives, join the club. But how do you choose between two sleds like these? Well, you open up your computer, fire up a spreadsheet, and come up with a fair and unbiased rating system, and you have the whole crew fill it out. Whichever one has the best score wins. That's exactly what we did. We looked at all aspects of a snowmobile, from storage to wind protection. Not just ride quality, but suspension adjustability. Not just engine performance, but engine economy and reliability. Not just included features, but overall value as well. Polaris's Switchback 800 Pro R scored huge points in ride quality, suspension adjustability, handling, overall rider comfort, included features, and overall value. 
It suffered in engine performance, engine economy, engine reliability, and most people felt it wasn't overly that warm to ride. Articat's El Tigre, with its all-new CTEC 2 600cc mill, scored huge points in ergonomics, rider comfort, engine performance, engine economy, engine reliability, handling, and overall rider enjoyment. Ride quality and features were two areas it suffered, but we know Arctic has a new shock package for next season, and features are something you pay for if you want them. We already know that for 2015, Polaris has addressed all the areas the switchback scored low and further improved the areas in which it already excels. The Axis is likely to be a game changer, but for this season, the switchback simply didn't score enough points to take home the title. Which means it's Arctic Cats El Tigre that walks away with the highly coveted honor of being Snowtrack's television's 2014 Real World Sled of the Year. It's comfortable, it's reliable, it handles great, and dang it, it's one fast kitty. It's the Arctic Cat El Tigre. Snow Tracks is sponsored by Triton Trailers, the cornerstone of every adventure. Over the past few seasons, we've brought you the Revolutionary Advanced Design Award, or RAD, and we've given it to the manufacturer who's had the biggest breakthrough in snowmobiling for that season. The award signifies what we here at Snowtracks Television believe to be the biggest breakthrough in technology in our industry for that current year. For 2014, Skidoo introduced ITC, the industry's first drive-by-wire throttle system on the 900 Ace four-stroke motor. While we did have complaints with the early pre-production ITC designs, Skidoo listened very intently and have made important adjustments, bringing a very acceptable system to the market for this current season. While the majority of hardcore sledders are going to have other technology on their mind, ITC has revolutionized both the entry level and rental market, making it way safer and far more controllable. With three on-the-fly adjustable throttle modes, riders can choose maximum efficiency in eco mode, moderate throttle response in standard mode, or sport mode, which allows a very peppy and responsive throttle feel. For the beginner, this is incredibly important as your snowmobile can feel smooth and confident or progress to sporty and quick when your confidence and riding capability increases. Rather than trading in your sled for more performance, it's as simple as pushing a button. While the multi-mode design is a breakthrough in itself, Skidoo took it one step further and bridged a gap that the world of snowmobiling has been missing for quite some time. Coming with a learning key, the 900 Ace motor can be speed limited to keep riders under a certain top speed. This means rental operators can now limit the top speed of any rider they choose. It'll also allow them to increase top speed as they feel the rider skill improves. For both newcomers to our sport and younger riders who truly don't have a three quarter size sled to purchase, this makes one sled do the job for three or even more. The ITC drive-by-wire system allows new riders to have a fun, safe, and smooth experience out on a snowmobile, and we believe this is going to have a greater impact on transitioning them from renters to buyers. And that's precisely the reason why for 2014, Snowtrax has awarded Skidoo's ITC Intelligent Throttle Control the RAD Award. Over the past few weeks, we've brought you up to speed on what's new from Polaris, Arctic Cat, and Yamaha. And for this week, it's Skidoo's turn. The main reason why we changed the front suspension on our RevXS platform is mainly because we felt that we had to raise the bar on the front suspension. So the three things that we change on the RAS2 front suspension is one, we wanted to minimize the camber change through uh, the suspension stroke. The second point was to minimize the roll when cornering. And the third point was to minimize the unsprung weight because unsprung weight you always gain, you always gain when you, you reduce the unsprung weight for better response of the suspension and better comfort. When the sled goes in big bumps, the, the slight toe-out effect will self-stabilize the vehicle and will put confidence in the rider's head. The new RAS2 front suspension will be found on one summit, the Summit X with T3 package. And MXZs, it will be on MXZ X, MXZ XRS, as well as MXZ TNT. 
On the Renegade packages, it will be on Renegade XRS, Renegade X, Renegade Backcountry, and Backcountry X, as well as Renegade Adrenaline in-season model. Both the XRS Renegade and the new Raz2 front end are going to set the bar high for Skidoo in 2015. And speaking of setting the bar high, the all-new Summit T3 package is going to be the biggest and possibly longest news of 2015. And by that, I mean a Summit of epic length, 174 inches to be exact. Offered in both 163 and 174, this new Summit package is spring order only and comes with a 3-inch lug. With the help of a serious weight savings diet, the T3 Summits for 2015 will weigh the same as the previous year's Summits, one shoe size smaller, meaning the 174 will weigh the same as the 2014 163, and the 163 will weigh the same as the previous 154. You get a whole lot of lug, a serious length track, and no weight penalty. This will be one serious contender for 2015 in the mountain market. Look for the full test ride of the T3 174 incher early next season on snow tracks. Test Ride is sponsored by Camelplast High Performance Tracks. Revive your ride. Like it or not, there are a good number of people out there who did feel the Nitro MTX was a decent mountain sled. Much of that praise centered around its stellar four-stroke motor. If you're gonna ride a four-stroke mountain sled, this is the motor you'd want under the hood. Unfortunately, there was even more people who really didn't like the Nitro MTX chassis for riding in steep and deep powder or tight tree lines. It was heavy, and its CG was much higher than ideal. Which is why Yamaha's newest mountain sled, the Viper MTX 162, is such a welcome addition to Yamaha's growing Viper lineup. Finally, their admirable three-cylinder four-stroke mill we've all come to like so much has found a home inside a mountain chassis where it can live up to its full potential. If there's one thing Yamaha has in spades, it's style. And before I go any further, I just want to take a second to acknowledge how awesome this thing looks sitting on the snow. Even if orange and blue isn't your thing, you got to admit, this is one sexy looking piece of machinery. The number one most important aspect of the Viper MTX is weight. Power to weight ratios are more important in the mountains than anywhere else. At altitude, you start at a horsepower disadvantage and are climbing through deep snow all day long. The Viper MTX is substantially lighter than the Nitro MTX model it replaces. This means it climbs up on top of the snow easier, requires less effort to pull over on its side, and the most important point for a guy like me, it's way easier to dig out when you get it buried. The Viper's 162 by 26 paddle track is a serious combination of rubber and Kevlar. Lesser power plants would struggle to spin this puppy in really deep conditions, but the Viper's four-stroke mill, with its fantastic low-end pull and instantaneous throttle response, seems almost unfazed by all that traction. Ergonomically, this chassis is excellent. The steering post is pretty vertical, so the handlebar action is quite flat. If you're coming from another brand, this can take some getting used to, but after a solid day on the trail, you'll feel right at home with it. Running boards are grippy and do a decent job of clearing snow. The seat is a new unit that's narrow, but longer than most mountain seats. At first, it seems excessively long, but there are some situations where it can be a benefit, and I didn't feel that it got in my way at all. Our Viper MTX is an SE model, which means it comes with a few fancy goodies the others don't, like a cool graphic wrap job, or more notably, a set of genuine Fox Float Evolve front shocks. If you're gonna have air shocks in your ride, these are the ones to have. It's no secret I'm not a big fan of air shocks on trail sleds, but in the mountains where weight is more important than a plush ride, they do have their place. Evols offer both lightweight and a decent ride, so everyone wins. It's not gonna take most of our more attentive viewers very long to notice that this is not your average Viper. This particular unit is sporting a very factory looking mountain performance turbo kit that can be purchased straight out of the Yamaha parts catalog. 
claimed horsepower is just over 180, which may not seem overly impressive for a turbo at sea level, but you have to remember, a turbo automatically compensates for thinner air at altitude. So where I rode this sled at 12,000 feet, it still made about 180 ponies. Where other 800s were struggling with numbers in the 115 to 120 horsepower range, I was still pulling like a banshee. At the end of the day, the question is always the same when you're talking about performance four-stroke snowmobiles. The question always is, do you notice the extra weight? And in this case, the answer is simple. Yes, it does feel heavier than a similar sled with an 800 two-stroke under the hood. However, its difference is becoming less and less of an issue. This chassis is so good in deep snow and this motor, especially when boosted, has so much torque, there are many situations you'd be happy to take the extra weight in exchange for all that extra power. In my opinion, the Viper MTX 162 SE represents a very important milestone for Yamaha. It gets them back in the game with a legitimate all-mountain sled whose strengths are not just limited to big bowls or steep chutes. If I was in the market for a new four-stroke mountain sled, I can't see I'd be looking a whole lot further than a Yamaha Viper MTX. Snow Tracks has been sponsored by Polaris Terrain Domination. Arctic Cat, share our passion. And by Go Ride Ontario, yours to discover.